Okay, we got a package in the mail. These are the Shankabees out of Kazakhstan by Roman. And I'm not gonna attempt to say his last name because I will not correctly get it. Let's see if we get this box cut open. I have never had his harps before, but they sounded really good and they look pretty cool. So let's just take a moment to figure out what this box is. I might just have to cut through this box. Oh, look at that. What do we got here? Oh, wow, those really, those magnets really stick well. Oh, dude, look at, look at that. The camera will pick that up. We'll just wipe some of that oil off. Wow, that's, those have really got a high level of polish. I wasn't anticipating how polished these are. That is just beautiful. See another, oh, a different wolf case. Here we have. They're necklace cases, it looks like, and these are very strong magnets. I really gotta put out. Oh, this one has a jumper on the back. They all have, oh, I guess they all have a jumper on the back. Very well oiled and very high level of polish. Very well oiled. Say for a flat fronter, this has a really, really good fit and finish. I'll keep each one with a case. Each case is different. Shankabees. Land of the Great Step. All four of them. Hold on. There we go. Look at that. An eagle. Really a lot of detail in these cases. These are laser cut cases as well, but I. I think these are a level above most laser cut cases I've seen, especially those neomedium magnets. Those are stout. Okay, we're gonna take a moment and be sanitizing. Awesome. Ah, oh, there's a top behind there. We're gonna take a minute and we're gonna just, oh, there we go. Nice thumbnail. Let's, let's arrange it so it's an excellent thumbnail here. Thumbnails are all about planning and what's also in the video. Bam. Okay. Let's take a minute. We're going to sanitize these off and I'll get right back with you. Get an ear on these. Okay. So starting off with these harps, I'm just first going to comment my thoughts on the case. The case is pretty original, good fit and finish. Very, very smooth, nice lacquer or varnish on there and really ornate all done by computer, but really ornate. The ma the magnets in it, I would say are pretty powerful. I don't think I'd be worried about this popping open. Very cool. And also, if you're wearing this around your neck, the string is going to help prevent that from popping open because you do have to loosen the string before you pop it open. But even after loosening the string, and I haven't wore any of these, these are brand new harps, there, it requires quite a bit of force. Those are pretty big neomidium magnets, if I'm saying neomidium correctly. Um, my other thought would be these harps will probably magnetize being kept in the cases, uh, but these are probably aggressively loud harps and bassy harps, so magnetization isn't going to be a huge issue. Well, let's start off by the harp. We're gonna start off by looking at this one that has the howling wolf on there. I really dig these cases. These are, it's cool art. And I'm not sure what this symbol is, but this symbol is prevalent in a lot of his harps. I think it's something cultural or something heritage. First off, commenting on these, I like that jumper on the back. That's fairly well done. I'm not sure if that is welded. I think that's a tiny machine done weld here. The tongue's fixed in the Glazerin style. Some of the tongues on these, I was able to inspect them while I was sanitizing off with the Mighty Mist and cleaning them. Now they do show fingerprints pretty well because they are super, super high, high polish. The gaps on them, I would say are extremely tight. These are going to be, I probably have to blow what's left of the, what's left of the oil out of there. These are going to be pretty loud harps. I'm, I have a feeling. Let's get an ear on this one. This one's the Howling Wolf and I will leave these available via a link down below in the description, it'll be in the harpery.com on Rarities Unboxing, where you just scroll down, hit the link, and sometimes in the uh, in the mobile app, the link, uh, the pop-down menu is hard to find. It should just look like a little upside-down 
mouth. Let's get an ear on these. I, I'm a rambler. That's what, if you paid any attention to the channel at all, you know that I'm a rambler. So. Very loud, very aggressive. It's kind of starting to loosen up. I think there's a little tiny amount of oil in it. When you have gaps that are like that, can you even see through those? <laughs> when you have gaps that look like that. It takes a second sometimes to get the oil out. So let's take it through the paces. Let's play it inward. Let's play it outward. Let's see if there's melodic nature. Let's see if there's saturated nature. Let's see what we got. Um, pretty aggressively, I'd say on the upper end of medium stiffness, but on the more aggressive side of that. Good play outward. It's definitely louder inward. But very good play outward. Pretty breathy. Definitely louder outward or inward. Oh my goodness, that is loud. That's like, that's like, it reminds me of God of Sev, but a little bit cleaner. The Yakutian flat fronted harps. And I'm backing up because the microphone is right here. So it's super loud. Very aggressively loud, very sensitive. Let's take it through. Let's see if this Howling Wolf, see if, uh, see how the outer space, I bet the outer space is going to be good. Yeah, probably one of the louder harps I played. Probably only rivaled by a God of Sev or Masco is probably what comes to my mind. And I don't have any coke. Oh, there's my coconut all over there. Not prepared. Haven't done an unboxing for a minute. I've done a feature, but no unboxings. And I will be sanitizing these back off before I put them in the case and re-oiling them. Um, for those who are interested, let's try another wolf one. Let's try this snarling wolf. I think that's a wolf, either a wolf or a husky. I would say it's wolf and nature themed. In those cases, those are cool. I'm probably gonna keep one of these for myself. I have to, I haven't kept a harp in a while. Um, not since really the Tartikov. Same cool design there. Gaps are wicked tight. Did you just say wickedness? Can I say wicked? Pretty decent compression. There's, there's not much compressing these frames. These frames, are stout and they've got they've got the jumper on the back so really not much compression there coming up in tone a little bit and let's give it a second see if it cleans up because i know that there's coconut oil trapped in here i would have to wash it with hot water to get them out oh those are those are sharp i like that not rough but those are sharp angles yeah these are these are cut on a laser but uh, all the hand finishing on this, all the gapping is, I would say, top notch. Good play outward, but I'd say for the strikingly loud uh, play, you'd want to be playing inward. Another medium, upper end of medium stiff. I'd say that's getting into stiff. That's probably good for inward hour play. Very saturated. Very, very loud of a wave that's making. So we're ground both sides on the reed. Very loud. I would, I would, if I were to describe this, I'd say it is 
startlingly aggressive. Okay, let's try another one. We're going to try this eagle. I'm saving that scarab one for last. A scarab or bug, Egyptian-y looking, I would call it. I would also describe this sound as magnetic, outer spacey. The gaps on this one is, here we go. I'm getting that one to compress a little bit. It's a little bit longer. Decent compression, extremely tight gaps. Really breathy. What note is that? If you know the note that this is, comment below. Is this around C? And I'm going to look and see in the descriptions. I'm going to put whether they're tuned or untuned. We also have options to tune them or leave them as the maker likes if they're untuned. Very, very loud. Hi, how was gymnastics? She gave me a balloon. Oh, you want to show your balloon on the on the, the on the on the video? We're doing a live or not a live upload, but an unboxing. Unbox some new hops. We'll say hi. We say hi. 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 All right. I'll Did be you up. You see, I have a balloon. Yeah. If you see his balloon, comment below. If you know what color, do you know what color that balloon we, is? We almost won it when we were doing gymnastics. Oh. She gave okay. me a balloon. We almost won. We almost lost it. It almost went all the way up to the ceiling. Oh yeah. Oh, it would have been adopt adopted by the ceiling maybe. Yeah, them balloons, them helium in them, helium in them. That's reverse gravity right there. Well, I will be up in just a moment or two. Tell if you could tell Ma, I'll be coming up, and I'll be putting a link for these in the in the uh, description below. Okay, this is the one. This one has a giant medallion. No jumper on it. This is probably longest or second longest. No jumper on the back of this, but it has a big medallion. Very, I want to say very Egyptian looking because we have the scarab. As a kid, I used to think that that was called a sacrab, but I believe it's pronounced scarab. And if anybody knows the pronunciation of this, um, and if it's different, uh, comment below. Yeah, I'm tricking y'all into commenting. That ups the end user engagement. More people get to see the video. So cool. This might be our thumbnail right here. Like, oh. <laughs> Anyways, let's play this. <laughs> How to wrap it up. My family's home now, so you squeeze an unboxing in where you can. See this. Gaps on this are very good. A little bit more relief on this, probably because it's a lower tuned harp. See, I'm seeing a bit of braise in in the uh, trigger loop. And that's where, if, if anybody's going to put braise or solder in a harp, I prefer it be in a tribber, trigger loop and not on knee bends because those knee bends is where it flexes and you always lose bits of solder uh, over the years playing harp. So if you're going to solder or braise um, your harps to weight them down, right there is a good option because it's all encased within the trigger loop. And these are my opinions. And if you have opinions, comment below. Steve, I'm going to keep tricking you. Comedy. Let's get an ear on this. Yeah, we should I, should. I should show this a little bit more. Yeah, very cool, very heavy, a lot of weight because the now it's double thick at the back. I'm gonna grip it like this. Very aggressive, very saturated. Take it all the way up. We'll take it all the way down. I'll see how high, I'll see how, how high I can get with it, how low I can get with it. I would say these harps are for those seeking saturated uh, techno type sound. Outer spacey sound. I would say if you're after the techno sound and you want a really high class dressy harp, really ornate, 
these these would be in in your market if you're looking for things for playing straight melodics. These are probably not for you, but if you're looking for them techno, them saturated sounds, and especially very loud sensitive harps, this would probably be more your style, more your thizzle. Anyways, we're going to wrap it up with that. Be sure to keep your harps clean, keep them dry, keep them mold, and most of all, be good to each other. And a big thank you to Roman, and I'm not going to attempt to say your last name because I cannot pronounce it. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I can barely pronounce my own last name, and it's got one syllable in it, one syllable. I love y'all. Harp out. <laughs> If anybody's interested in these, click the link below. Adios!